Welcome to Pickleball Journey. Today we are bringing you the basic volley tips for all levels. Let's get into it. Ah. All right, to get right into it, we're gonna start out by talking about the grips. Justin and I, we use an Eastern grip, but we would uh, advise you guys to pick a grip that you can use for your drive, to use for your volleys, for your overheads, for your serve, everything, because pickleball is one of those sports that um, you don't have enough time to kind of change your grip in most cases. So we would pick a grip that um, you can kind of use for every kind of shot. Uh, the first grip we'll talk about is the Continental. It's where that first knuckle is lined up with that right edge. I'm speaking in terms of right-handers. So you, you see the, the blade of the pal, that right edge, I kind of line that, my first knuckle up with that of the index finger, okay, as you can see there. The second grip, that's the Continental. Okay, the second grip is going to be the Eastern. This is what uh, Justin and I use. If you had a logo in the middle of your paddle or you're just lining it up with the center of your pal, that first knuckle would line up with that. So that's called the Eastern grip. And then the last is the semi-Western grip. I was just watching some pickleball the other day on YouTube for singles, and I saw some, someone using this grip. It's a semi-Western grip, okay? They use a serve, they use it on the forehand. This one's probably the most difficult to use for the backhand if you don't shift it. Um, the Continental is probably the most versatile grip, but we, Justin and I, have liked to use the Eastern because it's a good combo with the forehand, nice for rolling on the volleys. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult to get used to on the backhand, but over time it works well. Yeah, yeah and, and for both me and Elisha, we started off using the Continental, yep. so that hammer grip, but I think we both found, just through playing and trying different things, which we, we recommend you do, try the grips, but we found that we like the Eastern. Again, it allows us to come over the ball a little bit more on the forehand, yeah. which has helped with our drives, yeah. but then on the backhand, I like it as, you know, the, the Continental's good, but I've felt uh, just a little more confident with it over more here. Yeah. And so it's just a preference on, on what you do. That's a great piece of advice. Try every grip. Everyone's, everyone's different. Everyone's yeah. wrists are different. They feel different. So try them all. Get a feel from them. Every kind of stroke. Yeah. And then pick one that you can kind of use for all parts of your game. Yeah, love it. All right, so here we're talking about the ready position for the paddle. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have the paddle start off with it in the 12 o'clock position and then move it over slightly to the 10 or 11 o'clock. This is where we like to keep our paddle uh, in the ready position. Uh, I also, that's the first part. The second part, I like to keep it lower. So this is not only good for when they're at the baseline hitting mm -hmm. drives, because most of the shots you wanna be hitting from down here. If it is up high, those you wanna let go. So you don't need to be in this a ready position up high, but you want this lower. The second reason is uh, if, if we're hitting dinks, when you're in this position down here, you're ready for these low balls for the dinks. So Elisha, he'll start by doing some uh, drives to me and then we'll get into some dinks. Perfect. Nice. Now, one other thing I'll mention, as I, I'm a player that has a two-handed volley on my backhand, mm -hmm. so I like to set up with my left hand always on that paddle. Yeah. Uh, Elisha, he's someone that he's pretty much only using one-handed backhands. Yeah. So he's sitting out there, uh, he doesn't have his left hand on the paddle. And so that's a preference for you. Yeah. But again, if you do have a two-hander, keep it on there so you're always ready for that right away. Yeah, love it. Let's do a couple more. Boom. Nice. Boom. Boom. Good. Yeah, and so, you know, some advantages for that, and. Justin had mentioned the two versus the one. Some advantages for that one hand is you can get a little more reach, especially in the beginning. Yeah. But for the two, I sometimes go two, especially if I they're hitting an aggressive ball. So you're able to react a lot quicker and get the, the, the power you need to. So there's really advantages and disadvantages for each of that one and two. So, I mean, if you're willing to, you know, master kind of both to get like a hybrid yeah. and get the best of both worlds. But, and that's a good point. I, I've actually noticed Ben Johns, yeah. he, you know, one of the num number one player in the world. Yeah. He's been practicing his two-hander a lot. Mm. I don't know if he's switching fully to it. Yeah. He's got a great one-hander, yeah. but I think it's to become more versatile. Yeah. So he can, you know, sometimes you get jammed here and or get caught back, yep. just like you do you the two-hander. Uh, it's, it's good to be able to do both. Yep, spot on. All right, if you're like me, uh, you go through shoes really quick. 
you know, I'm wearing down these shoes. I don't know if you can see them here, but uh, I love it that I can go on Promise. They've got shoes, gear, all kinds of stuff. 10% discount. See the description below. Do it. Uh, make sure you stay out of the kitchen, unlike Elisha, but hop into the kitchen for their awesome curated content on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, they've got it all.